This is something one of the interviewers told me as well. One of them told me something to the effect of they'd rather hire a person with a high level of emotional intelligence and soft skills with common technical interview questions. So I went on a total of four interviews with two different companies last week. Didn't come away with an offer from either one of them because the first company I interviewed for, we had some logistical issues, some, well, more logistical issues on my end. So at the end of the day, I wasn't a good match for that position. It wasn't a good fit. And the second company, I noticed some things that made me, uh, hinted to me that I wouldn't be a good fit at that company. Let's put it that way, right? Which is fine, uh, you know, everybody, you know, we need to find our fit. I, I'm finding that interviewing is kind of like dating, if you will. You know, you'll find your person one day, right? Um, for me, I feel like it's the same thing. The first company was, I feel like I would have been a great fit there, but there was just some, there was just some logistics ish, issues with, um, you know, travel and transportation and stuff like that. So, you know, maybe next time or, you know, definitely maybe another company or maybe somewhere down the line right but i did come away with a lot of knowledge specifically from the first company that i interviewed with it was a great experience the people there were great the interviewers were great it seemed like a great vibe it's it's exactly as i would have imagined a tech company to be or you know one of the first ones that i would be working at it, it was it it's it it just it just fit the, the the image of my head it's crazy so here's the thing about these questions i'm going to go over the questions but i'm not going to really talk about the answers much except for one one specific scenario that was interesting to me because the interviewer and I got two different answers that were correct, which goes to show that they want to really see how you're thinking about these problems, how you would troubleshoot these problems, rather than just knowing the right answers. Of course, they want you to know the right answers. Ideally, you would know the right answers, but they wanna see how you would arrive at the answers. They also wanna see if you, you're gonna say you don't know. Uh, I think that is a very important thing to say in an interview, if you don't know, just say, I don't know, but I do know how I would find that answer. Google, <laughs> but um, you should you, you should ideally be honest about your knowledge about a specific question if and when you can. You should have a reasonable amount of knowledge of each of these questions to where you can mix and match the definitions and solutions to come up with solutions for a higher level problem. And I'm gonna start it off with this complex question or complex scenario that one of the interviewers gave me. And I found it really interesting and it tickled me a little bit. So the scenario is that there's a switch with two separate VLANs, one reserved for the PCs and one reserved for the phones, right? So we have the data VLAN and the voice VLAN. So let's say that the data VLAN is called VLAN 10 and the voice VLAN is called VLAN 20. As you know, these VLANs have a separate IP addressing scheme. So VLAN 10 has a subnet number of 192.168.10.0 slash 24 and VLAN 20 has an IP address scheme of 192.168.20.0 slash 24, right? That's the subnet number for VLAN 20. VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 exist on this one switch. They have their respective access ports and their respective IP addressing scheme. And for some reason, when a user or maybe IT, the IT person, comes along, they hook up a phone to an access port. And for some reason, this phone is getting an IP address of 192.168.10.20, right? And you start to you start to think, okay, why is it getting this IP address, right? The interviewer asks me, what's what's the issue what seems to be what seems to be the issue so he asked me what i would do so what i would do is 
I would go into the Cisco command line because he says it's a Cisco question. Um, but this could be any, this could be any device really. It could be any, it could be any networking device that supports voice VLANs and stuff like that. So I said that I would go into the Cisco CLI and do a show running config and find out what the settings are for that access port. And I said that it could be that in the, 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 uh, the configuration that we have maybe uh maybe maybe it's uh maybe we have the vlans reversed because that's how i would think of it i would think that it has the vlans reversed and maybe that's why the ip addressing um scheme of the phone or the ip address of the phone is getting an ip address that belongs to vlan 10 or the data vlan right at least that's how i was thinking about it right so say for instance it's an access port it's maybe it's on the third access port and it, it has a command issue, maybe it's FA03, and it has a command of switch port access VLAN, I don't know, VLAN 20, and it has a switch port voice VLAN 10, right? So it makes sense that when that phone is plugged in, right, it would probably get the IP address of the data VLAN because the VLANs are swapped. I don't know. I'm, that's that was my that was my logic. Maybe maybe that's correct. Maybe that's incorrect. I didn't lab it up, but it would kind of make sense to me that that's what the you know that's what it would be. Or maybe I'm wrong, right? But he said um, the answer that he was looking for was DHCP. Maybe the DHCP settings are wrong, which again makes it makes sense, right? Maybe the maybe uh, the, the DHCP server has the wrong um, range of IP addresses configured for VLAN 10. Maybe we have a V. Maybe we have the DHCP set on a Cisco router, and we have the wrong ranges scoped in, or something like that, or the wrong subnet number. Maybe there's a typo somewhere, right? So that's why it's important to kind of know how to mix and match these concepts because yeah you know the concept of a vlan you know the concept of dhcp they build on one another and maybe an answer can you know maybe the solution can manifest itself in one of those ways i that's what i was thinking i was thinking about going straight to the show configuration command so ideally they want to see how you think about these problems right now on to some common technical interview questions in actuality because that one was something that was a little bit further out so common technical interview questions what is dhcp you need to know that and you need to know it well enough to speak about it in an intelligent way and i say that in an intelligent way because again maybe there's going to be another question down the line that builds on dhcp they're probably going to give you a scenario and you might need to know the concept of DHCP further than, oh, it's a server that automates configuration of IP addresses. Yeah, that's great. But what else does a DHCP server do? What can go wrong with a DHCP server, right? I was also asked about static IP addressing, right? That's something that came up in a few interviews what else what is it so what is a static ip address and when will you use a static ip address that's something that came up uh what is dns gotta know dns i think you should come up with a clever metaphor a clever analogy to describe dns there's two of them that i know of and both of them are brilliant and they're usually impressed when you use either one of those analogies they usually laugh which is great it's always to get it's always good to get people laughing right to loosen up the energy in the room right they're also going to ask you what is an ip address they might give you a bonus question and ask you to name some private ip address blocks that you can use on the inside of a network when i say inside of the network i'm talking more of the inside nat right uh, i'm talking about nat right so that's something you're going to know you have to know what is a router that's something you need to know but I wouldn't say you have to go too deep into it. You do have to know the difference between a router and a modem. Many people nowadays think of their router as, or a router as something like a wireless access point and a cable modem built all into one. But when you're going into the tech world, you're gonna be using more enterprise level technologies and you're gonna have to know the enterprise level definitions of these network devices, right? You need to know what a switch is. There's many different ways you can answer what a switch is, 
but you have to know what a switch is on a deep enough level to answer another question that relates to a switch, right? You can know that a switch switches frames between hosts using the destination MAC address, right? It's a layer two device. But you also need to know that a managed switch can manifest VLANs. And then you gotta know what the difference is between a LAN and a VLAN. And you have to know the case uses of a VLAN. You also have to know something like, can a switch route packets between VLANs? These are common things that you have to know because if you don't know these on a deep enough level, they will trip you up, right? A question if you're doing something like a help desk position or maybe something like uh, you know IT support, whatever, you need to know how to reset a password in Active Directory. Active Directory is vast, has a lot of options has a lot of things that you can do in active directory but you need to know how to reset that password and i think there's there's about three different ways you can reset a password at least that i know of and you need to be able to walk that through in your head and explain it to them you also need to know what a private ip address is you need to know what a public ip address is you need to know if a private ip address can be routed out onto the internet uh, what else do you need to know? And those are, I, I, it's not what you need to know necessarily. It's more so common questions that will come up. They will come up. They definitely will come up. I didn't expect to get as much um, networking stuff, but that's probably because I have the CCNA on my resume. And that's CCNA, by the way, like I said, I think I said it in another video, it will get you a lot of interviews. It's up to you to sell yourself on that interview and to, and to defend that CCNA. Um, any certification that you have, as a matter of fact, if you have an A plus, you better know you better know how to repair a computer, which I completely bombed in a in a previous interview. Yo, I man, ask me anything about networking and I'll kill it. But at this point, I really don't remember much about computer repair, and it was a mess. It was a mess. Um, but that's what these interviews are for. You're gonna learn a lot on these interviews because you learn not just the technical aspect of it, but you learn the people aspect of it. You learn the soft skills aspect of it, which is really powerful. This is something one of the interviewers told me as well. One of them told me something to the effect of, They'd rather hire a person with a high level of emotional intelligence and soft skills with, you know, okay tech skills, maybe in, a, in an entry level position that is, than a person that is highly technical, but has a low level of emotional intelligence and soft skills and, you know, again, phenomenal tech skills, right? So yeah, that's something that I heard a lot and to have it confirmed in one of these interviews is very interesting to see because I didn't believe it. I more so believe that they wanted those technical skills, of course, and they wanted them at a high level. And soft skills is something that I guess they might not really care too much about, right? Um, but I was wrong. If you like this type of content, like, comment, subscribe, turn on that post notification bell. And you can also click right here and I'll talk to you guys next time.